The Bible has a lot to say about refugees. It doesn't always use that word. It, it uses the word foreigner, alien, homeless, and others, but it does use the word refugee in many translations. There are literally hundreds of verses in the Bible about taking care of refugees. And the Bible says, if you take care of people who've been displaced out of their home, God says, I will take care of you. And that's why part of the peace plan, P-E-A-C-E, -E, when we talk about promoting reconciliation and equipping leaders, assisting the poor, caring for the sick, and educating the next generation, you can't do that without caring for refugees. Now, most people have no idea how many refugees there are in the world. Right now, the number of people who've been displaced out of their home, either by war or persecution, 54 million. You didn't know that. 54 million. Most people don't know, for instance, in the city of the nation of Jordan, there are almost more refugees in Jordan than there are Jordanians. Millions live in Jordan that aren't Jordanians. And about, oh, I think it's about 17 million of those 54 million who aren't being able to live in their home tonight because of war persecution. About 17 million of those are actually living in refugee camps, which is the most difficult place you could possibly uh, imagine living. Now, during the second Sudanese war in Sudan, uh, one of the nations of Africa, as you know, uh, that war went, I think, 19, in the mid 80s uh, into, into about 2005. There were about two and a half million people displaced. No, two and a half million people killed. And millions displaced. And they lost their homes. And they had to go into all kinds of refugee camps. The people who were doing aid at that time and since then began to refer to the people in the refugee camps as the lost boys of Sudan. That's the term that they use. It wasn't a derogatory term, it just meant they didn't have any place to go home to. And it, they were called the Lost Boys of Sudan. Tonight, we have a real honor of having two of the men who were in that group. And they've made a movie uh, about their lives. Uh, Emmanuel Jal and Gerd Duaney. I remember Duaney real easy because my middle name is Duane. So I think, so we must be related. He's my brother from another mother. But uh, they were both born in Sudan during the war, and in spite of persecution, war, not having anything to eat, homelessness, refugee camps, they were able to survive with their great faith, resilience, and determination. And they've made a movie uh, uh, about their lives, and it's called The Good Lie. The executive producer, Ron Howard, you all know, uh, Reese Witherspoon stars in this movie, uh, but Emmanuel and Gare are really two of the main stars because it's about them. And uh, I want you to watch this trailer. This movie's coming out this next Friday on October 3rd. I would encourage you to all go see it. But then I want to invite them out and I want you to hear their testimonies. Okay? So watch this uh, about the good lie. Our names are on that list. <laughs> we are going to America. Yes, hello, this is Carrie. Pick up who? I'm just supposed to help them find jobs. You must be the guys from uh, Somalia, Senegal. Sudan. Did your luggage come down the chute? Great. Where is your husband? No, I'm not married. I provide for myself. Your survival skills are very impressive. Thanks. I'll call you tomorrow morning and we'll start the job hunt. I need your help. Are there any dangerous animals in this area? Such as? Lions. <laughs> no, there's no lions here. You're safe. What's their story, anyway? I'm not sure. They seem pretty traumatized. Made my way to the borderline. I had 34 brothers and sisters, and they all gone but one. 
and she need to be here with us. That's gonna be a problem. All flights from the Kakuma refugee camp have been stopped. She's a child refugee of war. Since 9-11, the program here has stopped indefinitely. You can't get involved in these people's problems. I don't think they're gonna make it if they're not together. We are in America now, and in America we are nothing. That is not true. I wonder if your church group would help me hosting a refugee. You sure you're ready to take this on? Definitely. You're being asked to make choices no one should have to make. I will pray for you, Yardi. Yardi? It is a special name for you. It means great white cow. Well, it's better than a lot of things I've been called. They call us the lost boy of Sudan. I don't think we are lost. I think we are found. My brothers and I prayed for a miracle, but I never expected a miracle would find us. So where do we begin? If you can get the whole house presentable, what's wrong with the rest of the house? Really? There's a reason you do not have a husband. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so I want you to stand and give a warm saddleback welcome to two of the producers and two of the stars of The Good Lie. Would you welcome them right now? <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, Woo welcome to Saddleback. <laughs> All right, you're using my time, sit down. <laughs> Have a seat. Well first, uh, let's just go through the introductions here. We have uh, two of our producers and two of the stars and, and, and two men who are actually lived this story. Um, Molly uh, Smith down here uh, ha has made other movies about true stories. One of them was The Blind Side. Remember The Blind Side? Okay. So, so she's not uh, a foreigner to uh, knowing how to take a true story and bring it to the big screen. And we thank you for doing that. And Thad, we're really glad to have you here on this too. All right, guys. This is one of the few guys I look up to because he's actually taller than me. Uh, Emmanuel and Gar, first, just tell us a little bit about uh, the whole journey. Just, just start from scratch. Just start with, with what is, what's the big overall theme that you've seen in your life from going through the crisis of the war in Sudan, going through all of that waiting period and then now today seeing actually God use you in amazing ways as entertainers, as actors and, and, and uh, different ways. Tell me about your own personal journey. I think that's what people are interested in. All right, all right. Well, thank you so much for, for having us here. Yeah. Oh, for having me here. You should You're welcome. bring them here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, the journey has been very long mm -hmm. coming to this part of the world. Uh, in 1983, when the Civil War broke out in Sudan, I was very small, maybe age of seven to eight years old. And then similar to the movie, and then uh, one morning, the helicopter came to the village, and then they were dropping grenades over us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I wasn't familiar with what was going on in the country. Mm -hmm. And then next thing I know, mom and myself and my sister we, we, we ran into a, to a forest while I was wearing a white uniform. I remember that white uniform. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, mom dragged me down and started to rub the uniform with the, with the, with the mud so that it can be, it can be black with sure. my skin yeah. so that I don't become a target. Sure. And then we stay in, in the forest for many, many, many months, and then we come back and we go back in. So that's, that's my first experience with the Civil War in Sudan. How many years did it take between the moment you had that first experience and you ended up in the United States? I 
from 1983 to 1994, I stayed in the civil war in Sudan and between the refugee camps in total. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Emmanuel, tell me a little bit about the early stage of this story. Uh, well, for me, I was born in the most difficult time. And the mm. first time I witnessed war, I thought the world was ending because mm. I saw bombs coming down and people running different direction. Yeah. I used to hear my mother saying that the world will end one day because she used to mm. go and pray in mm. the church. And for me, I thought, this is it. So the war reached the core of my family. Mm. Later on to learn all my aunties died during the war and my mom too was claimed by the war. And by the age of seven, my father gave me out mm. to go mm. to Ethiopia. We were told we were gonna go to school. Sure. And then arriving in Ethiopia, we actually went to school for a while. Then I ended up getting trained where I became a child soldier. Mm. And so, and most of the lost boys, as America known, the most of them were child soldiers. But when you're coming to America, you can't say I'm a child soldier because yeah. they were trained. The smaller ones managed to, to leave. Some of them left their guns at the borders mm -hmm. and cross. But I was lucky because I survived one journey, which is the lowest point that I've ever gone as a human being where we're like a group of 200 to 400 young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we plan an escape, mm -hmm. and only 16 people survive. Mm -hmm. It was a situation mm -hmm. where cannibalism started, and I was tempted to eat my friend. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I remember uh, I prayed to, I normally pray to my mother's God when there's a yeah. situation. Uh -huh. And so Bird was the, the one that came between me from eating my friend. Huh. And so, and huh. I ended up in that area to his home area called what? Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. met the British yeah, Edward, yeah, yeah. Emma Kuhn, and she smuggled yeah. me to Kenya. Wow. Molly and Thad, I want to ask each of you a question. Molly, I'm going to ask you, uh, what was the, most, the biggest challenge in making the film? And Thad, I just want to ask you, what's a lesson that you learned out of the whole thing? One of the things we know about Sudan uh, is it, it's actually... Uh, has a lot of diversity because of many little tribes. There are many little tribes. You know, we've talked about the unengaged people groups here at Saddleback. No believer, no Bible, no body of Christ. There are 400 of those 3,000 tribes in the world are in Sudan. 400 of the unengaged tribes, that final 3,000, are in Sudan. Saddleback, you know, has been really involved in Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Kenya, and, and East African nations, Burundi, um, we have actually sent Rwandans into, the, uh, into South Sudan to help plant churches and to do uh, peace stuff up there. Uh, not just only our own people going, but actually Rwandans going in too. And so we'll talk about more of that later. Mo uh, uh, Molly, talk to me about uh, the big challenge in making this film. Well, I think one of the biggest challenges um, was probably just to take on th their story and try to do it justice. I mm -hmm. mean, they've had such an epic, amazing journey and a mm -hmm. long journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we really wanted to honor their story and, and tell it with integrity. Yeah. Um, our filmmaker uh, came on board who comes from documentaries and had, mm. had started in the South Sudan in the 90s uh -huh. trying to do a documentary and was run out. Uh -huh. And one of the first things he said to us was, I'd love to make this movie with the real refugees, with yeah. the real guys. Yeah. And we absolutely trusted that that was the right thing to do. Yeah. And because you can never capture their spirit and what they've been through yeah, and yeah. Um, you know but it but it was a you know it was a tall order and we you know we set out on a worldwide casting search and took about six months and all of the children in the film who play the younger yeah. versions of these guys yeah. are children of real lost boys and girls yeah. um, living here in America how many came to America in the in the first wave I believe it was about 3,500 before 9-11 uh -huh. uh -huh. and now there's about 7,000 or so living here in America got it Got it. So, Ed, what's a, what, as, a, as a producer, what's a big takeaway as you watch this movie, the story come together? Well, the, there's so many things. Um, yeah. You know, generally speaking, I think what struck me um, was just the triumph of, of the human spirit. Watching these guys and hearing their stories and how they represent so many, so many yeah. people that, you know, didn't necessarily get the, the, um, lottery and, and, and were able to come to the United States. Yeah. 
But to, to see that every human, and, and uh, these guys are perfect examples, you know, God has a plan for all these people. And obviously they're here today telling their story. They're, you know, fortunately we were able to, to make a movie that yeah. lets the world see you know, just exactly what these guys are about. And um, so I think that was it. Just it's an amazing mix of um, faith, hope, yeah. breaking your heart, and wow, heartwarming at the same time. Because the tragedy of having all your friends and family die and having your, then be separated from family and friends and things like that is heartbreaking. And yet the, the resilience, the faith, and the hope Emmanuel, what was it like to, to star in a movie about what you actually lived? What was that like? Well, we like replaying our lives, but this movie became a blessing because we had a chance to be part of it, to tell the combination of voices of many people out yeah. there. Yeah. But to be honest, the way I can sum uh, summarize things yeah. in a personal level, yeah. I'll say, like, we came from the bottom like mm. lobsters, mm. and now we are rising on the top like rock stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, there's a verse in the Bible about that. <laughs> the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. <laughs> And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. So, Gary, tell me about your own faith and um, how it helped you through all of this, all of the disappointments. Yeah, many people ask me uh, how many disappointments you have in your life. Mm. But I say I have many challenges in my life mm. as a child. Mm. And... Uh, Yes, the journey was very tough. Mm. I couldn't wish it for anybody else. Mm. I think it was good that it was me that had to do it. Yeah. And as long as all my limbs are here to walk all the way to your own village here, and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. um, this movie is very important to us. Mm. And it's important to, to everybody around the world mm. to see it. Mm -hmm. Because it is no longer our story. Mm. We have walked walk thousands of miles. Mm. We have made it here. America has welcomed us, mm. has given us opportunity to go to school mm. and uh, a different way to see our own problem mm -hmm. in our own country. Mm -hmm. So this story become American story as well. And we're just happy to be here to be the voice that had to tell yeah. the story. Yeah. yeah. Amen. All right, now what I want to do is I want to, I want to pray uh, three things. I want us to pray that God will continue to give the cast and the team and all the staff and now all of the people who are marketing and managing uh, Paul Lauer and everybody who's trying to get the word out. Uh, first, let's pray for these guys that God will give them the strength they need. Second, let's pray for the 54 million people who are refugeed in the world right now. Now only 17 million of them are in camps, but that's 17 million that are in camps right now. I have been to this camp that they were in, Kakuma. I've been to that camp. I've been to many refugees camps around the world. And we, you don't even understand what it's like until you can actually see it. So we'll pray for the movie uh, to do two things, that it will bring awareness to the plight of so many people who really don't even have a home in any way at all. And then let's pray for all of the good people in all the different organizations who are trying to help, trying to make a difference, trying to bring relief, trying to bring comfort, trying to relieve pain, trying to do everything we're trying to do with the peace plan and pray for them uh, together, okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, we want to thank you for this team that's here on stage, for others that uh, aren't involved, for Ron Howard, executive producer, Reese, and others who are involved in this movie. We thank you uh, for a movie that's not just entertaining and heartwarming, but it really does have a message to share, a message of compassion and grace. And Lord, you have commanded us to care about refugees. 
And you've said that one day we'll stand before you and you'll say, I was a stranger and you took me in and I was thirsty and you gave me drink and I was hungry and you fed me and I was naked and you clothed me. And we will say, when did we do that, Lord? And you said, in as much as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. So help us to treat other people the way you would. We pray for the success of this movie. We pray for your protection over Emmanuel and Gar and all others who have been affected uh, by uh, war and by famine and by uh, persecution and by all of the different things that cause people to be displaced. And we pray in such a way that we might be the answer to this prayer that you would use us. Help us to pray the two most dangerous words, use me, to make a difference in the world. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say thank you to these guys for being here, making it down. <clears throat> thank you so much. God bless you guys.